Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 15th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Starting out here the last 48 hours, imagery of our amazing sun, a couple plasma filament eruptions, and as well a large backside CME from an event on the backside of the sun, having a look at the last two days incoming. No sunspots, just a couple bright active regions. No numbered sunspots yet. Plasma filament there on the right hand side. Looking at outgoing, this would be the right hand side of our sun. This is where we saw a couple plasma ejections there. One and then two, another little one. Looking at multi-spectrum with the last two days of events, pointing them out, and as well, active sunspot regions and coronal holes, which are building in both southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere, plasma filaments. Look at this plasma filament, southeast region of our sun, bottom right-hand side, cool little plasma loop, and then ripping away. just before some pretty intense activity from the outgoing sunspot regions. 171 angstroms here. This is where you can really see the magnetic field of the sunspot regions. Umbral field activated there from the backside event, and as well a couple bright regions turning in. No numbered sunspots yet, but we do have four sunspots that are outgoing, still somewhat visible. Having a look here at sunspot regions in action, sped up a little bit. As that was another fast forming equatorial sunspot region this week. Space weather conditions, we are under an R1 minor radio blackout impacts expected. Solar winds are coming in at 396 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing a three strong C-class solar flare events over the past 24 hours throughout the day today, one last night. Geomagnetic activity hopping up to a three, oh, just over a three over the past few hours from that most recent event. Looking at ISPA space prediction spiral showing that backside CME from whatever happened on the backside and that was straight at Mercury. But if you look on the right hand side, yellow planet is Earth. We do have some activity coming this way that was not projected in earlier models. Having a look at LASCO 3, showing the broad spectrum of space weather events for the past two days. Look at that large backside CME in a northward fashion. Amazing. Wow, this one's huge. You can see it pump out and it swirls around. Wow, massive plasma ejection from our sun in a north and backside event. Amazing stuff. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as we're up in over 230 earthquakes in the 24-hour period, but no major strong magnitudes. Interesting four-pointers straight across Indonesia and Papua New Guinea with 5.1s. Pretty deep earthquake in Italy. 4.3 there, Iran, and as well 4.2 and 4.9, Afghanistan. But yeah, notable there, 4.3, 358 kilometer depth, Malta, Italy, quiet through the South American plate, quiet Caribbean plate, minor activity ensuing today. But then we get to the United States. We had a pretty rare earthquake here. Standard Illinois reporting a 3.6 earthquake, 4-kilometer four, four depth, and as well southwest from there. Bluff City, Kansas, minor earthquakes ringing out there. And then, of course, we still have earthquakes. Western Texas, White City, New Mexico. That is the New Madrid. That is the West the New Madrid activity acting up. There is a lot of seismic pressure in the northern hemisphere right now. 
Pahala, Hawaii with the 3.1. All of a sudden gone quiet through Alaska. Get to Fiji here, 390 kilometer depth. And that's the deepest the past 24 hours. But notable here, New Zealand, both north and south on the island. 4.1s ringing out today. And that was after I just noted yesterday the 5. Point, I believe 9 that was in the Kermadec Islands to watch for New Zealand. And then we get to Iceland where not much activity has been ringing out today. Looking at the last 24 hours, lots of minor activity but nothing like the major earthquakes that we've seen fours and fives over the past week and even two weeks. Still no eruption yet, but people are being evacuated. Streets are literally crumbling, the ground is lifting and sinking, and sulfuric gases are, exca are escaping. So a lot of people have been evacuated. Mount Edna had a pretty large, large eruption over the past couple days. Maybe that released some of the pressure that was northward towards Iceland. Who knows? But let's have a look at the last seven days for shakers across the world. I want to thank you all for tuning in and joining the Dew crew here, staying aware and prepared. Much love to you all, and I appreciate all of the love and support, and as well the subscriptions, of course, and members. You guys keep me inspired. I love you all. And just be ready, because something's going to pop here soon. It is way too quiet in North America. And we've seen deep earthquakes all around the rest of the planet. Something's coming. Let's get to earthquakes, or sorry, volcanoes. We've got Reventador, Tornado in Key West, as well as Sangay in Ecuador, Popopoquetito in Mexico, Ibu in Indonesia, Sabancaya in Peru. 172 active hazards. A lot of these flood alerts are through West and East Africa, Central regions, through the Congo. Samaru in Indonesia, Sangay in Ecuador, Swiss in Ajima, Japan. So heads up my African viewers, as you guys do have some extreme weather events that are occurring this week and as well South America transitioning into summertime down there. Having a look at satellite imagery from around the world, big systems, both the North Atlantic and North Pacific. We've got Tropical Cyclone Mal, who is already downgraded to a tropical depression. It was a Category 2 at one point. System wrapping itself up into Myanmar. And as well, look at that intense weather across West Africa. Heavy downpours, lots of lightning. Let's have a look at world weather forecast brought to you by windy.com. Interesting event coming out of the Gulf this week. Three low pressure systems whipping out of there and then joining forces for a big event for the Atlantic provinces. Still have a forecast here for an in intense storm as these two lows come out of the Gulf Friday into Saturday, 17th into 18th. And then by the 19th, it will be affecting the Atlantic provinces. And then the Colorado low comes across eastern United States and Canada, lines itself up for Ontario. Cold high pressure ridge moving in behind that, and that will bring on the snow. Long range forecast, but nothing too accumulative. But here's a look at that low as it centers itself straight through Ontario, the center of that low. We will see some windy and rainy events and then snowy events as Canada gets locked into the polar vortex. Having a look at South America, intense systems moving through there as well, through parts of Buenos Aires and Paraguay, Bolivia, northern Argentina, lingering low pressure system here. Each day the daily evaporation rains and that low are causing some havoc down there. Overlooking Europe, multiple lows through the Atlantic, Interesting low reoccurring and trapped through the Mediterranean. And then another low moves in for North Africa. Overlooking Australia, Southeast Asia. 
You've got that system heading into Myanmar and as well, low pressure systems finally leaving Australia and heading southeastwards towards New Zealand. Long range forecast showing a lot of rain for Australia, east, eastern side, and then some big systems here developing in the North Pacific as it will be bringing multiple rounds of snow to northern BC and Alaska. Strong system cutting across Kamchatka and then watch these systems ramp up in the long range forecast heading towards Alaska and northern BC. Well, and as well southern BC. Having a look at snowfall totals for the next 10 days there, upwards of 230 centimeters of snow in those high or mountainous regions. And as well, looking at about 60 to 75 centimeters of snow through parts of uh, Newfoundland and northern Quebec and Ontario. Looking around the rest of the world, no major snow events to talk about just yet, but the polar vortex is setting up. Having a look at the most current look at our upper level winds showing the polar vortex. Looks like the number nine. Quick look at the trade winds around the world and as well versus the southern hemisphere as it has completely flip-flopped and we are ready for winter. Southern hemisphere is ready for summer. Hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please don't forget to smack that like button and maybe share with a friend and family. Very informative and important information for humanity. Much love to you all and prayers for humanity. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.